Welcome to Visions of Progress. I'm your host, Nathan Sparks, with the Economic Development Council of Okaloosa County. And it's our pleasure today to be highlighting the unmanned systems sector, a rapidly emerging sector that we believe has tremendous potential for new jobs and investment in Okaloosa County. We're excited about the growth of this emerging sector, and we're also excited to have two members of our new unmanned systems network, USNet for short, here in the studio with us today. I'd now like to introduce you to the chairman of USNet, Jenny Humbert, and the vice chair, Terry Prue. Jenny, welcome. Thank you so much, Nathan. Um, NINI is an engineering firm that specializes in unmanned air vehicles, ground control mm -hmm. systems, um, logistics and deployment uh, services. We are an 8A certified small business. Uh, we're made up of 250 people, mm -hmm. and almost half of our workforce are forward deployed. Um, we opened our, we're headquartered in Hollywood, Maryland, oh. and we opened our offices here in NISO about two years ago, and we're warmly welcomed by the community. We, at NINI, we believe that Okaloosa County is the ideal environment for developing our next generation of unmanned systems. Well, that's certainly great to hear, and we appreciate your decision to invest in Okaloosa County and look forward to talking more about the sector's future in Okaloosa County. <coughs> Terry, it's good to have you with us as well. Tell us about you. Booz Allen Engineering Services. Uh, Booz Allen Engineering Services is a much larger company, as we discussed. It's about 1,000 employees. Uh, we're headquartered in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, we offer tailored, rapid scientific and engineering solutions for our government and civilian government uh, uh, clients. Uh, those include systems engineering, applied, science, uh, applied sciences, and, and um, systems integration and engineering solutions. Uh, my, in Fort Walton Beach, we specialize in program management uh, and systems engineering. We provide a range of of services to both Eglin and Hurlburt in the way of uh, range support services. My specific role in the company is to manage unmanned aircraft and unmanned underwater vehicle systems, which is an ideal job for me hmm. because I managed unmanned aircraft systems programs in, for the United States Air Force when I was active duty. So uh, that's an ideal situation for me. I get to do something I love and I get to contribute both to, in my retirement, both to uh, military and helping bring some of those economic uh, benefits to the community in Okaloosa County. So you are one of those many, many that we hear about that have gone through our military installations here in Okaloosa County and have uh, found opportunity in the commercial sector after you've uh, served proudly in the Air Force? That's right, and I, and I decided to, uh, I liked Okaloosa County so much, felt so welcomed here that my, we decided to come back here after we retired from the military. Well, that's great to hear, absolutely. Well, you know, when we were chatting the other day, uh, you all uh, shared what I thought was an interesting point about the unmanned systems sector. And specifically, you shared that, um, you know, when, when people hear unmanned systems, they may not realize that there is al always a human in, in the loop, if you will. There's always human interface with unmanned systems. That's right. Talk to me a little bit about that, if you would, Jenny. That's right, and this is something that Terry and I discuss often. Whether it's um, an air vehicle, a ground um, surface on the water or subsurface, mm -hmm. there's always a man in the loop. So for the air vehicles, uh, which we specialize in, the pilot and the mission commander are on the ground instead of in the cockpit. And this is a great benefit because for um, environments that there is a hazard uh, for somebody's well-being, you can set, for example, the oil spills. Right. Um, when the oil spill happened um, here in the Gulf Coast, the environment was very toxic. Um, scientists could send in the unmanned vehicles to do the preliminary testing and, and before the actual people went in to um, assess the damage. And there's many air times when um, unmanned systems can be used and instead of uh, a person. Absolutely. Um, Terry, would you like to add to that? Sure. Uh, this is an area that we've uh, spoken about before where unfortunately Hollywood has helped shape the public perception of unmanned aircraft and Hollywood got to the issue first with films about unmanned systems that operated independently of human control. The reality outside of the Hollywood movies is that there was always a human being in control of the unmanned system, controlling what the system does and doesn't do. And that's one of the reasons that the senior Air Force leadership has refers to unmanned systems or unmanned aircraft systems as remotely piloted aircraft. They want to reassure the public and, and 
make sure that everybody understands that there's always a human being in that loop and the aircraft are not operating autonomously of human control. Right. Um, as Jenny mentioned, this is, uh, creates a lot of opportunities where you, having the human being on the ground, you can introduce an unmanned system into a hazardous environment or an atmosphere that would be toxic mm -hmm. to human life. And a great example of that was when a tidal wave struck a, a, a Japanese atomic power plant a few years back and they were able to use unmanned ground systems to go in and evaluate the situation and help the responders understand what was actually going on on the ground and, and decide on what courses of action they had to take to stabilize the situation without having to risk a human being. Uh, and that's, uh, and that's, um, that's the kind of benefit that you can expect to see and the reality that you don't see in Hollywood movies, that there is always a human being in charge of the unmanned system and they're not just operating independently. Interesting. Well, you know, we're, um, as we think about uh, the growth of the unmanned system sector at the EDC, uh, it's clear that, uh, you know, given the position that, the, that the, um, the unmanned system sector is in in terms of its growth, um, and given the assets that exist in our community, we feel like we've got a real opportunity here in Okaloosa County to perhaps position our community as, you know, I hate to overstate, but maybe the next Silicon Valley of the uh, unmanned systems world. And there, there are a variety of reasons uh, for that. In addition to growing companies like the two of yours, that, um, obviously are represented here today, we have other growing companies. Uh, but we appear, um, again, as, as our um, layman's perspective, if you will, at the EDC, it appears that we have a number of other components uh, in, our, in our community that are attractive to the unmanned systems industry. And I'd like to hear your industry perspective on what those components might be, if, if you would start, Jenny. Sure. Um, we, there's so many things here in Okaloosa County that are uh, perfect for companies that are either starting here or expanding. I mean, low cost of living, um, strong infrastructure, but one of the things that I think are one of the greatest assets in Okaloosa County is the award-winning education system. Mm. Um, certainly in the primary education, we have the STEM Academy, um, the Choice Institutes that are preparing students well in the STEM areas, and that's science, technology, um, engineering, and math. And Nini and our industry partners, we both support and recruit from the STEM disciplines. Um, then you have the colleges and the universities here. Uh, mm. The work and the research and development that's being um, conducted at the University of Florida's REEF facility, mm -hmm. uh, UWF's engineering program, North of Florida State College. I mean, this is Embry-Riddle. And it's not a comprehensive list, but there's so many um, schools here, universities, colleges, and the primary education that are preparing students for the workforce. And um, both our industry and DOD are really looking for strong uh, students coming out of these areas. Absolutely. Now, you know, with many industries, infrastructure is also important in addition to education. And would you, do, you, do you find that uh, Okaloosa County has the, the, the level of infrastructure and support that you all need to be successful? I, I definitely agree with Jenny's assessment. Uh, I think that Okaloosa County and the Gulf Coast have a number of assets that make this area ideal for un the unmanned systems industry to want to relocate to. Our workforce is second to none. I would put them up against anybody with the scientific and the engineering disciplines that we have here, our, our, our level of flight testing experience. Mm -hmm. We have uh, sophisticated flight test ranges that are, uh, have co-located land and water ranges, which is a rarity in anywhere in the country. And we have the instrumented test facilities that are already here. As we mentioned, every year, a lot of military members get out of the service, uh, either retire or just uh, leave the service at, at Eglin or Holbert. And a lot of those folks have the robotic experience that, that we need. They like the area, as my family and I did. They like the family-friendly environment that we have here in Okaloosa County, and they decide to stay here and make it their home. So we have the, that ex current experience that's leaving the military that's, uh, that's moving right into our community. Um, when uh, compared with the rest of Florida, we also have a very low uh, commercial and population density mm -hmm. compared to how built up the rest of Florida is, and that's something that makes this part of Florida, the Gulf Coast and Okaloosa County, very uh, attractive to businesses that want to relocate here. That's a good point. So we offer every competitive advantage that I think that our competitors do, uh, all in one place and in a beautiful location to boot. Excellent points. Um, you know, the, the workforce piece, being new in my seat at the EDC, I've been very pleased to find that we have uh, a top-notch workforce and that we have the educational institutions that are preparing that workforce of tomorrow. And you know, as we've been talking about the unmanned systems sector, 
uh, one thing that struck me is we're not just talking about engineers. We're not just talking about uh, technical, uh, you know, four-year or even beyond degrees that are required. Can you talk a little bit um, about some of those uh, some of those skills that would be required in the unmanned system sector to support the success of businesses like Nini and Booz Allen? Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, and the engineers and scientists are an important part um, of our industry, but our it, our industry is really a true melting pot of um, of workforce. Manufacturing and machining is a huge part. Uh, welders, electricians, and machinists are among the key components that we could not do without. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm, cur I believe that the welding schools here have a waiting list of students um, waiting to get into these programs. And when these students graduate, we want to be able to keep them here in the area. Right. Um, and these needs are certainly expand as our industry expands. Um, Nini and our industry partners will look to, towards uh, Okaloosa Applied Technology Center and the other technology schools um, for this talent. Excellent, excellent. Terry? I, I think studies have been uh, performed for, for our Congress that show that the unmanned systems industry uh, will require a wide range of skills, a lot of which are already available in Okaloosa County and many of which don't require a college degree. In fact, we're already having great discussions with the local school districts on offering certificate or accreditation programs, as well as working to grow STEM education in the local high schools and the middle schools mm -hmm. so that we can make sure that we're growing the workforce of tomorrow today. For every operator position that's created, just like with any other high-tech system, for every operator or pilot system that would be created, there would be a whole army of people behind those. Uh, many other positions that would be needed to manufacture the systems, people with the mechanical and the electrical and the engineering skills to be able to repair them and computer skills, uh, instructors and training personnel, uh, logistics, quality control, and all of the administrative people that would be required behind the scenes to help make the industry work. So uh, it's not so much about the, the number of pilots or the number of end system, o the operators on the high end that would be created. It would be that entire infrastructure that would be needed to support the industry. Um, and so job creation would come across, uh, would be across the board, and I think it would benefit everybody. Excellent. So if we're creating a true ecosystem, we can we can expect opportunities at every level, essentially. That's That's right. Yes. That's great news, and certainly we look forward to helping make that happen with USNet. We're going to take a short break, and we'll come back after the break, and we'll learn more about some of the commercial applications of unmanned systems. Thank you. students need to be online at the same time, Cox Business is there. When the big game relies on an even bigger communications network, we're there. And when students need the same tools and opportunities no matter where they are, we're there. With a $16 billion network and ability to route 50 million calls a day, Cox Business powers education. We're there for your business too. The Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation presents Color Me Cured 5K and 10K Fun Run on November 30th at the Fort Walton Beach Landing. Check-in is at 8 a.m., the run starts at 9, and winds through Fort Walton Beach as runners are drenched in an array of vibrant colors, all to support JDRF's mission to cure, better treat, and prevent type 1 diabetes. After the run, enjoy great food and entertainment at KC Sandbar and Grill. For more information, call 8307126 or visit us at facebook.com slash JDRF Color Me Cured. Welcome back to the EDC's Vision of Progress. I'm your host, Nathan Sparks, and today we're talking with Jenny Humbert and Terry Prue about the emerging unmanned systems sector in Okaloosa County. Jenny, as you know, the EDC is very committed to diversification. Um, you know, as I've come in new to my position, I hear that theme as I talk to elected leadership around this community. There's a sense that we have to diversify beyond the two legs of military and tourism. And when I first heard about the unmanned system sector, I have to admit that I thought it was all about the military, when in actuality, it's far more than that. And as I've come to learn more about the sector over the past three months, I'm amazed at all that 
uh, is around the unmanned system sector and all that uh, the opportunities entail. Can you talk to me a little bit about those opportunities? Sure. Unmanned systems are not exclusively for the military anymore, and the, potentially, the potential economic benefits for our county are significant. Uh, more and more opportunities are availing themselves for commercial applications um, and the associated mm -hmm. technology. Um, Fire, fire, firefighting and wildfire mapping, uh, precision agriculture is a huge one right now, um, environmental monitoring, disaster preparedness and mitigation, um, ocean robotics and maritime surveillance are just a few. Um, mm. And But so many of these applications are relevant for right here in our county and Absolutely. the surrounding areas. Um, more and more farmers are utilizing unmanned systems to monitor the health of their crops and mm. water fertili fertilizing and it's a it's because it's a much more cost effective uh, solution in many t in many instances uh, the use for unmanned systems and robotics really are endless uh, pipeline inspection mm -hmm. surveying hurricane tracking urban planning uh, port patrol and protection really the list goes on and right. on clearly mm -hmm. Terry are there others that uh you can add? Well, I think Jenny's made some great points about how unmanned systems can provide increased safety for the general public. An example that came to mind when she was talking about that was the recent fires that were in California and, and Arizona that threatened the, the uh, population. The California Air National Guard and that fire by Sequoia, they were able to deploy an unmanned aircraft to help identify where the fire was, where the fire was spreading to and help identify the, the weather conditions that were around the, that situation. It provided the, the ground commander much greater situational awareness as to what was going on on the ground. Uh, it identified where they had to fire under control, uh, areas that they needed to continue to watch, uh, and it also identified safe escape routes for the firefighters that were involved in, in fighting the fire. And it was used to great effect. It really helped the really help the incident commander on the ground have that situational awareness and stay on top of the changing situation on the ground and make the best use of his available resources. And unfortunately, the same technology was not available in Prescott, Arizona in July. And the firefighters that were there uh, fighting that blaze, uh, the wind changed uh, rapidly without warning and the fire changed direction. And, and unfortunately, very sadly, 19 firefighters lost their life. As, and that was um, that's a great example of the additional um, the additional safety where unmanned systems can make a huge difference in public safety and protection of uh, property and lives. Uh, the second example that I'm sure is of great interest to Floridians is weather safety, severe mm -hmm. weather safety. For the second year in a row, NASA has sent unmanned aircraft this year into the Atlantic to uh, monitor hurricane formation and, and to try to figure out how hurricanes actually come into being and what, may, what helps, what environmental situations help determine their, their severity. The aircraft are operated out of Virginia and they can fly for 28 hours without refueling, which means they can get out way over the Atlantic and really get a good idea of what's going on with the storms as they're coming across from the coast of Africa. That gives scientists a, a, an invaluable first-hand look at, at the eye wall of the storm, mm -hmm. the precipitation, where the winds are going, and how the, the, uh, how the climate in that area is contributing to the, to, to the strengthening of the storm. So, and the beauty of it is, is that we don't have to risk it, a human air crew to get that, that data as we've had to do historically. So if unmanned systems can give us that better understanding of hurricane formation and behavior, I think all Floridians were, are going to enjoy greater safety from severe storms, and that's a direct benefit of unmanned aircraft. Absolutely, an excellent point. Uh, you know, when economic developers think about growing an industry cluster or attracting an industry cluster, which is obviously what we're looking to do with the unmanned systems sector, we also talk about the subsectors, the other uh, ancillary industries that we could expect to grow in the community. And, uh, you know, I'm very interested in understanding from, from your perspective as an industry practitioner, what types of subsectors, Terry, do you think uh, we would see proliferate in Okaloosa County if we are uh, successful with this uh, strategy to continue to, to grow the unmanned system sector? I think unmanned systems uh, are going to require a lot of support from other subsectors. You need materials of all sorts, uh, especially composites. Uh, because the air, unmanned aircraft and other vehicles have to be of, uh, of a lighter weight uh, normally than manned uh, aircraft and, and systems do. Mm. You require uh, the machining and the tooling of the assembly lines. You need locations to build and maintain the systems at. 
uh, research work is needed in power systems and propulsion systems and aerodynamics, just like the work that's being done currently at the University of Florida's Reef. Uh, communications companies are needed to make sure that you can maintain the communications links between the human being and the unmanned systems so that you're in con that constant control that we talked about and make sure that any test data that's taken from evaluating the system is able to be captured and, and to be evaluated. So if we were to develop this unmanned systems industry in the Gulf Coast, we would become a magnet for attracting those other types of companies here and with the jobs that they would bring. That's an excellent point, and you mentioned the University of Florida's REEF, um, the uh, Graduate Engineering Research Center that's right here in Okaloosa County. And I'll tell you one, uh, one initiative that we're working on at the EDC is, is we're in conversations with the REEF and the University of Florida and others about whether or not it makes sense for us to team together to have a uh, uh, collaborative uh, test site, if you will, for unmanned systems. And right now, uh, studies are still in development and research is still underway, but I'm excited about the fact that this could be a way that we could all right. partner for the future of the industry in Okaloosa County. Do you all have any thoughts about that, Jenny? Um, I, absolutely. We think that the um, this is the prime area for the expansion of mm -hmm. our industry, certainly of businesses starting. Um, one of the things that Terry and I were, were talking about the other day is unmanned systems for some people is something new. I mean, it's something like you said earlier that people think of just in the military. Right. But it's just like um, GPS. Terry and I were talking about it. Maybe mm -hmm. you want to talk a little bit more about that and how, and how it started out as, a, as something in the military, something very um, secretive at the time. And now we all use it. It's on our phones, it's in our car, and the same is going to be true with unmanned systems. I think you're right. I think this is a natural evolution of what started out as a military technology that's now making its migration to the civilian population. GPS is a great example of that, or even satellite use. How many people could have expected that 20 years ago you would be able to go out and look at your neighborhood on Zillow or, or uh, Google or mm -hmm. any of these other sites? Um, so, so this is the natural progression of what was a classified military capability at one point moving into the mainstream of American life and, and becoming a tool that we can use for the greater, for the greater good of the public. So uh, 20 years from now, something that seems somewhat space age now may be commonplace. That's exactly, right. and there's a great historical precedent for that. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, one thing that we followed at the EDC, and I know you all have followed being in the industry, is the FAA's uh, uh, effort to site four unmanned systems test sites uh, around the country. And uh, Terry, I, I know that uh, this is something that you're familiar with. Can you tell us a little bit about that process? Sure. Uh, the Congress passed legislation uh, a little over a year ago, 18 months ago, that, that mandated the creation of unmanned aircraft test sites around the, the country. Everybody sees the technology is progressing and eventually we'll reach the point where the unmanned aircraft are going to have to operate in the national airspace alongside manned aircraft. So the focus of these test sites is to, to make sure that we understand the technology, that we develop the, uh, the sense and avoid technologies and mm -hmm. the control technologies that are, that are needed to make that happen. This is a very competitive situation because there are going to be thousands of jobs that are going to be created. There are going to be millions and millions of dollars of economic benefit to the areas that are selected. So there were over 30 different locations that, that I self-identified to the FAA as wanting to host one of the national uh, test sites. So we, we recognized the opportunity here in Okaloosa County. Originally, it appeared as if Florida's solution was going to probably focus on Central Florida because we have the uh, end of the space shuttle program. Right. There were a lot of people at the Cape that uh, they were looking for what was going to be the next progression for technology. And, uh, and the original solution looked like it was going to center on the I-4 corridor. We got a hold of them and we, we brought to their attention all of everything that Okaloosa County and the Gulf Coast had to bring in the way of that trained workforce and all of the facilities that we talked about. And they were absolutely amazed. Uh, the folks from Central Florida made a visit up here and they left absolutely amazed at the capabilities, the companies mm -hmm. that we had here, the talent base that we had here and how we could contribute. So we did uh, partner with the rest of Florida mm -hmm. on, and uh, Space Florida at the Cape on a submitting a proposal for Florida to be a host to a, to a national unmanned aircraft test site. Um, the proposals went in in the spring and we expected a decision around December of this year. 
but the economic benefit of being selected as a test site could be tremendous for the state. And there will be four of those, as I understand it, four test sites selected, is that correct? I think the number has been up to six. Oh, okay, yeah. excellent. So, and I understand states are being very aggressive in pursuing uh, these uh, designations. They are, there's a lot at stake, because we talked about the jobs and the money. This is, this is a watershed opportunity that we have a chance to be part of. Excellent, excellent. We certainly hope that we have success with that, but we know regardless that here in Okaloosa County, we're well positioned for the growth of the sector. That's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's step back to the, uh, the newly formed U.S. Net Committee, Jenny, that you're chair of. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we've had one meeting so far, but uh, the, the, the idea for U.S. Net has been around for some time. Share with our viewers a little bit about the evolution of U.S. Net and your vision for it, if you would. Sure. Um, so we started out as an unmanned vehicle working group, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we worked along for about a year and a half, two years, and then together with the EDC, we realized that the um, the opportunity for our county is really in unmanned systems as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and the EDC decided to stand up this committee, which was an excellent idea because really our industry is big. We're unmanned systems, air, ground, mm -hmm. surface, and subsurface, along with robotics. And so there's a lot of opportunity for the entire industry here in our, in, in our county. Um, as you know, Nathan, over the last year and a half, two years, there's been many economic studies looking at unmanned systems because it's an right. industry that's about to explode. Um, the common denominator in these studies is that jobs will be created, revenue will be generated, and the um, it's really where this is going to happen, not if it's going to happen. Um, I believe, and I think I speak for all of us at USNet, that Okaloosa County is the has a unique opportunity and is well positioned to develop and expand the unmanned systems and the uh, robotics enterprise. Absolutely. Um, I would like to personally extend an invitation to those watching um, who work in any of the unmanned systems or the robotics industries to come and join us at USNet. Uh, we meet once every two months, but we need your expertise and we really want you to have a seat at that table. Excellent, excellent. And we, we echo that from the EDC's perspective. We're very excited about where the group is, is headed. We're very excited about the future of this industry in our community. And we greatly appreciate your investment of time and resources in Okaloosa County. Thank you for being with us today. Thank this you This has so been much a real having pleasure us. having you here in the studio. Um, obviously, uh, we here in, uh, in Okaloosa County have some serious opportunity with this sector, and we appreciate uh, you tuning in today to learn about the unmanned system sector and look forward to sharing more good news from this sector over the coming weeks, months, and years. I'm Nathan Sparks, and on behalf of the Economic Development Council of Okaloosa County, thanks for tuning in.